It's a beautiful game. You've definitely seen a lot of matches, so you probably know all of the rules inside out, right? Or do you? Well, it turns out that there are quite a few weird and unknown rules in the game. So let's take a look at the weirdest football rules you didn't know existed. Let's kick things off. You can't score an own goal from a free kick or throw in. Not that you'd want to, but this is a legit rule. You cannot score an own goal directly from a free kick. If the ball touched another player on the way to goal, then it would stand. But if you were to kick the ball back and no one touched it, the ref would award a corner instead. It's the same story with throw-ins. You can't throw the ball back into your goal and have it stand. This is unless a player touches it on the way through to goal, of course. Premier League fans might remember the infamous Peter Ankleman howler for Aston Villa. Worst of all in a game against arch rivals Birmingham City, Olaf Melberg took a throw-in back to the goalkeeper, Ankleman. Anks lifted his foot to control the ball, but it brushed the underside of his studs and ended up in the back of the net. Ankleman probably wished he'd never set foot on the pitch, which brings us nicely to our next strange rule. You can get sent off before the match starts. This one sounds bizarre, but it's totally true. Just ask Patrice Evra, because the same thing happened to him. Before a Europa League match, Evra got into an altercation with a fan. The ref came and sent Evra off. But unlike being sent off during a game, because the match hadn't officially started, United were allowed to replace Evra in their starting 11. It's a strange rule, that's for sure. Now, say that you do make it onto the pitch, great but not everything that ends up on the pitch should be there. As a matter of fact, foreign objects touching the ball are deemed interference. On the pitch, football is intense. It can be blood and thunder and chaos. Tackles fly, players tussle, and the ball bounces around like a pinball. If a ref gets in the way of the ball, it's expected that the game stops and there will be a dropped ball. If a second ball finds its way onto the pitch, it must be removed instantly. The point is, elements outside of the pitch can't directly interfere with Play. Let's look back at one of the most notorious goals scored in Premier League history. Sunderland against Liverpool. Darren Bent lines up a shot. It ain't the best hit. It's got more sting than a scorpion baby, but it's traveling straight for Pepe Reina in the Liverpool goal. It should be an easy routine save, but then the ball strikes a beach ball, which had been tossed from the stands onto the pitch. The ball deflects from it, away from Reina, and into the net. Goal! By the rules of the game, the goal shouldn't have stood, but on this occasion it was given by the ref. A crazy moment like this can be so rare that it ends up being a rule that during the game no one quite knows. Unfortunately for Liverpool and Reina, the goal stood, but since that day, when anything remotely similar has happened, the rule is well known and clear. The goal won't stand. From foreign objects to underwear? Undershorts must be the same color as your shorts. Are footballers a bit soft in the modern era? Training with gloves and hats, or Ashley Young and his infamous snood. A scarf and hood combo that came into fashion for a year in the Premier League. Undershorts are pretty standard now in football. They help regulate temperature and keep those thighs warm. Even though football players love to express individuality through personalized boots, when it comes to undershorts, they must match the color of the kit trunks. Yep, pink undershorts beneath a pair of white trunks is a big no-no. You'd probably want to get those substituted. And speaking of substitutions, a player can refuse to be substituted. Football is a team game. Nowadays, teams need to rotate their squads. In a short space of around 30 years, we've seen the subs bench expand from 3 to 5 to 7 to 9 players. There's now an allowance in the Premier League to use 4 of those subs within a game. For the most part, that starting 11 understands that at any moment they could be yanked out of the game and replaced. The number board comes up. The player sees they're being hooked from the field of play. Off they walk, back to the bench, or if they're not happy, straight to the changing room. Did you know? A player can refuse to come off. If they refuse to leave the pitch, the officials will insist the game continues with the original player staying on the pitch. This won't always make a team happy, of course. Step forward, Kepa Ariza Balaya of Chelsea. He's guarding the net in the Carabao Cup final against Man City. He refused to come off at the end of extra time. Maurizio Sarri had wanted to make a tactical switch in order to put a penalty saving specialist, Willy Caballero, on instead. Chelsea lost the shootout and Kepa was then fined by the club afterwards. 
While we're talking about penalties, did you know about this next rule? Penalty shootout rule. Penalty kicks are a tense part of the game. If you're an England fan, then a penalty kick is the last thing you want to see. It means almost unavoidable failure. We've seen all types of penalties. There's the cheeky pananka. There's the staggered run-up. Players can try to play mind games too. Then you either opt for placement or power. But did you know that there's a pretty strange rule involving penalty shootouts? Let's say you've had a fiery game and one side has had a player or two sent off. That should mean more of an advantage for the side with 11 players once it comes to the shootout. Not so. Both sides are allowed an equal number of penalty takers. If one side has 10 players, the other will have 10 players available, 9 and 9, and so on. If you didn't know this rule, wait till you hear this next one. No corner flags, no game. Have you ever looked at the corner flags and wondered just what purpose they serve? Well, for one, they can give players viewing far across the field of play an idea of the lines. That can be useful when playing long passes. One odd thing about the corner flag is how it can very occasionally seem to contradict the no interference rule too. Is it on the pitch? Off the pitch? If the ball knocks it and doesn't go out of play, the ball is still live, much like the goalposts then. They're probably more important than casual observers might think. They've been shadow boxed countless times in goal celebrations too. It may surprise you to know that a game can't go ahead without corner flags in place. No flags, no game. We've got a few more strange rules to look at. Here's our next one. The ball. This is probably a more obvious one. If you have no balls, you can't play. Hey, come on guys, you know what I mean. Yes, the football itself has to meet certain specifications. For one, it should be made of only particular materials. Gone are the days of the old school heavy leather balls. Your balls also need to be between 68 and 70 centimeters in circumference and round, of course. Sorry, NFL fans. The ball should also be in good order and fully inflated. It's happened before in matches where a ball loses air and the ref stops play until a suitable replacement is on the pitch. When you strike a ball hard, it's possible for some air to get out, so it's actually possible that one powerful shot could take enough air from a ball to mean it's not match worthy. This guy probably didn't know about this rule. In practice, it means if a player shoots and scores with a ball that's a little flat, the goal will not stand. Next up, illegal goal celebration. Now, most people probably don't know that you can get punished for illegal goal celebrations. These can include intentionally winding up the opposition fans or time wasting. More commonly seen is the automatic booking for players who fully remove their shirt. This means players have to be pretty careful about how they act after a goal and not get too excited. There's another sidebar to this particular rule though. If a player gets booked for their celebration but the goal is then disallowed, the booking will still stand. Pretty harsh dude. This rule was brought in during the 2019-2020 season and was because of VAR in particular. As if VAR couldn't suck anymore, right? Don't pick that up. Here's another the rule. The goalie snatches the ball from the air from a cross. A beautiful clean take. Firstly, he's got to release the ball within six seconds. Here's a question for you. Have you ever seen a goalkeeper release it within six seconds if they're not trying to launch a quick counter? No, me neither. It's a rule which is regularly bent to the point of breaking. Anyway, here's the other rule. Once a goalkeeper releases the ball, they cannot pick it back up again. An opponent or teammate via head or chest has to touch the ball again before they can pick it up again. It's a little bit of an extension to the six second rule to stop time wasting, but also helps to increase potential mistakes, which means goals. And we're all here to see some goals, right? Which of these rules was the weirdest?